Okay. Hello, everybody. My name's Pip Coleman and welcome. Today, we're going to be talking to the lovely Tanya Bell from Green Room Interiors. And she is an intuitive interior designer. So I love talking to people who do things in a way that is just a little bit quirky and different. So welcome, Tanya. Nice to talk to you today. Thank you, Pip. Thank you for having me. And I'm really excited about being interviewed by you. Um, we know each other quite well, but um, this is going to be exciting just for you to delve deeper and find out a bit more about me. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's so interesting. Yes, we, we do know each other as friends. So it's nice when you're having a conversation with someone and it's a bit more natural. You know, sometimes yes. when you get on these interviews, you know, people get a bit... Uh, I'm being filmed. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to pretend we're having a normal conversation. It's fine. That's it. That's it's fine. It. So maybe we should start at the beginning. For those of um, you watching who don't know Tanya and are all about her business, maybe you could share with us what led you to starting your own business as an interior designer. Yeah, good question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I've actually been doing some self, a lot of self-reflection lately, and I recently wrote a blog post about my journey from when I was a child to now Great. and what made me go into the chosen field that I've, that I am in now. Mm. And it's, it actually stems right back to when I was a kid and my dad, very handy, and he made a beautiful puppy house for me and my sister and I remember that it was just, I felt like it was the Taj Mahal, you know, it was very grand in my, yeah. my mind, <laughs> but very humble. Um, and I remember as a kid, I used to go into that cubby house and I would sweep the dirt floor, <laughs> right, and I'd go out into the garden and pick little bunches of natives and whatever flowers we had in the garden, make little posies on the table and I'd... We had a beautiful little window and some curtains that my mum had made. So I used to open the curtains and I'd welcome in my friends. So right back then, I was actually really much, a very much a homemaker and designer. Mm. Little right. did I know it. Yeah. Um, and it was funny because all the way through, I went through high school and into my 20s and I lived overseas for many years of my 20s. And I really didn't really know what I wanted to be when I grew up. <laughs> um, I kind of suppressed all of that, those uh, wants and needs, um, and I went sort of more down a, another path. But mm. when I I came back from the UK um, when I was 29 and my marriage had broken up and I came back and lived with my parents after a while and it was daunting. But it actually was great because it gave me the time just to sit and think about what I want to do my direction you know my whole life changed um and I started dappling in a bit of decorating at in my old bedroom and I kind of started liking you know faffing and you know working out colors and buying new bed linen and decorating bits and pieces so then I thought well I'll do a short course and see what you know that's all about well that started me on a tra trajectory that I would never have um yeah, where I am now, mm. it's taken me all those years. But that was like, gosh, that was about 20 years ago. Yeah. Over 20 years. And yeah, I just thought, wow, there's something in this. I really enjoy it. And I thought, yeah. gosh, I could actually start a business. Yeah. And so I went back to uni full time. And fortunately, at the time, I'd met a, a wonderful man who's my husband now. <laughs> um, and he supported me. And I studied full time for two years. And as soon as I finished studying, I started my business. Fantastic. And that was over 17 years ago. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that so? I love when you look back and you have those moments of this all stemmed from when you were a child. That's yep. so yes. beautiful that it, um, you know, and a lot of people when you're doing coaching or if you go to a therapist or anything like that where they say, you know, if you're worried about what you want to do going forward, a life coach will say to you, what did you love doing as a child? Yeah. What was it that you loved to do? What was it that you were 
um, really good at that was really easy for you. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that will give you the key to what it is that you are supposed to do as an adult. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Fascinating. But if I hadn't had that time to reflect and really just take stock of my life, I mm. wouldn't have really woken up to that. So I'm really glad I have that time to, to reflect. Mm. Yeah, that's so cool. I love that. Yeah. So, yay. So 17 years, that's pretty <laughs> cool. So in that time, were you pretty clear about who you wanted to serve, like what sort of interior design you wanted to do? Or were you, um, has that sort of evolved more recently, you know, as you've, as you clarified what you want to do in your business? Yeah, yeah, more, very much the latter, Pip. Mm. Um, when I first started my business, I was pretty much, I was very green. I didn't know anything about business. I didn't know anything about design. Really, I'd come straight out of uni. I've, I've learned a lot along the way. I've made a lot of mistakes. Mm-hmm. Um, and fortunately, I was so grateful to come across a wonderful business coach um, about four or five years ago and her name is Karen Hendry and she's my angel. (laughs) (laughs) She's the one that's put me in such a a good stead for the future and really helped me clarify a lot of things about who I am as a business owner and how I can bring that into my work and share it with my clients. Yeah, exactly. And I know Karen too. That's how we met. Um, So one of the cool exercises that we did, um, I remember when I was coming to the group um, coaching was uh, an exercise around what is your why or, you know, what's the, the, the thing that's underneath your whole business. You know, we know what you do and we know, um, you know, how you do it sort of we haven't got to the how quite yet but we know that you're an interior designer but but the why underneath it it didn't occur to me until we started having those conversations that underneath it is the thing that is the passion that kind of gets you going and also attracts the the right type of clients to you so what is your why Okay. Oh, I love that question. Because I love to recite my why. <laughs> I love it as well. I, you know, it when when I did start to do all that study with, with Karen and we got to the point where I got the statement, I cried because it was just embodiment of, mm. of everything I'm all about in my life. Yeah. And so that that why is sparking inspirational positive change in others through genuine and authentic connection. Beautiful. Yeah, so that's pretty yeah. heavy. <laughs> oh, no, it's great. It's great. And it's interesting to me because you, you'd you probably think that an interior designer might say um, putting furniture into the beautiful feng shui space so that, you know, like something that relates to people kind of don't really understand that the why is about your personal inspiration, your personal reason for doing what you do. Yeah. It's not about the actual, um, you know, elements. Yeah. yeah. So and, it's, it's quite interesting. And the, the great thing about that statement is that I really love to connect with my clients from the outset. And if I have that really great connection with them and I can be authentic, they can be authentic, then... I inspire them on their journey and we get this amazing result at the end and they are proud of what we've achieved together. So it's a collaborative thing rather than me just going in and saying, yep, chuck all this out and put all this new stuff in, you know. it's (laughs) And some designers are like that. But I love to work with my clients and really get inside their heads and understand what makes them tick. Yeah. And because it is a space that we're designing for them to live in. It's actually an extension of them. So if I don't get it right, they won't feel comfortable in their own home. And And that's that's really important. Yeah. Yeah. So the relationship between you and that client is key. You know, yeah, it makes no sense. You think of designing, you know, those designer shows on TV where they go, you know, let's just gut everything and, put all this stuff back in like you just said throw out everything and and start again and you think what if that person walks into that space and goes all right this is not me this is this is somebody else's perception of 
of what this space needed and it's not it's not me so I love that you say that you really work closely with your clients and and coming from that space of you know sparking and insp that inspiration in not just you but in them as well yep and creating positive change in them so you know some people have actually said to me at the end I just love coming home I feel so yeah. safe at home it's just so beautiful yeah. and that really improves people's lives and that's yeah. that makes my heart sing you know <laughs> oh yeah look that's so great I love that because and that's the thing that's the sort of feedback that will help you to work out your why so if anyone's trying to work out what their why is when someone tells you what they feel after you've done your service or your yeah. um pro or given them the, the, the product that you're you created um that will give you an indication of what it is that your why is don't you think like when yeah. someone gives you yeah some that's true mm. yeah it's yeah because sometimes we don't see it for ourselves it's mm. like a reflection yeah. back to us yeah that's fantastic I love it so is there um I would say with you when I met you I you know I had an, a, a perception of what an interior designer was and but then the more that we talked and the more that we obviously we were working with a coach that was getting us to sort of dig a little bit deeper but the more we talked I found that there was something about the way that you did interior design that was different to the way that I thought interior design was done um, in that you actually trust your intuition quite significantly and maybe the other interior design designers do too but they just don't say that that's what yep. they do yep. so um perhaps you could explain that and then we'll move into the next little yep. question that I have for you but yep. um yeah or would you like to go with the question that you that we were going to oh, talk look, about I, I don't mind whatever way the <laughs> conversation goes that's I just fine. yeah I just <laughs> I just felt like it would be interesting to talk about how you know how you actually do that with someone yeah yeah um I think for me it's a lot of uh picking up on cues mm -hmm. um right from the very first contact whether it's an email a message instant message on um dm on instagram or an email or a phone call or face to face mm -hmm. um I start picking up on cues with like I can usually tell what my favorite color is by what they're wearing and right um you know I just really tune in you know um I think I've been doing a lot of self-development work over the years probably gosh yeah maybe about 20 odd years I've been working on myself and mm. really honing in on my intuition and my gut instinct yep and that for everything in business that mm. anyone who's in business it's so important to to um, rely on that because it stops you from making the wrong decision. Yeah. And even when it comes to me making um, selections for clients, like mm. I remember I did recently, I did a uh, concept for a psychologist and yeah. it was for her um, meeting room with her clients. And she wanted it to be a bit more personal for her to enjoy so much time in this room, but also comfortable for her clients. Mm. Now, I chose a couple of prints that um, she thought would be lovely, some vintage prints. One of them was um, a scene from uh, the Mansfield in Victoria mm -hmm. um, with some horses running, go th going through the bush. And then another one was um, a lovely lady on a, on a set of skis at Threadbow in New South Wales. And she sent me an email when, I, when she looked at the concept afterwards, yeah. she said, oh, my gosh, Tanya, you are a god. <laughs> and I'm like, what? He said, how did you know that me and my husband love going out into the bush in Mansfield, riding our horses, and we love going skiing at Threadbow? How did you know that? And I went, I didn't. <laughs> well, you did. <laughs> and so that just cemented to her that I really got her, you know, um, I didn't know her all that well when I right. first met her. I've got to know her since then. But it just shocked me to know that I just did that instinctively. You know, I didn't even know. So cool. I don't know. I just tuned yeah. in. Yeah. So you never spoke about either of those things. You just picked no. those prints and thought that'll be nice to put in the space. That's it. It was more about the colours and the composition. 
that I was going for. Yeah. And instinctively, I chose mm. those two. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so that's so that's what I that's what I think is really cool because I think perhaps there is actually a lot of intuition that comes in when we talk about designing, when we talk about decorating a, a space. Yeah. There is a lot of intuition that comes in, especially if you're, you know, putting colours together. Uh, the, yeah. The owner of the business that I work for um, at a, the gift shop is an interior designer and she just puts the space, she makes the space so welcoming and beautiful and and because she the way she puts things together and she's very intuitive in the way she does that. And uh, so I think it's really fascinating and it makes me go, oh, yeah, wow, I could put that colour, gives me inspiration yeah, when I look yeah. at it because I go, oh, yeah, I could put that colour and that design together or those two designs that have the same colour together and I would never have thought to do that, you know. Mm. Um, and particularly when you meet someone like me who's very matchy-matchy, like I like things to match and I like to have, you know, a certain number of things, um, if you can tap into that and, yes. and yes. still give the person that matchiness, <laughs> but also give them a bit of, ooh, you know, yeah. like yeah. fluffy, fluffy. Taking cushions. people a little bit outside their comfort zone. Yeah. I love to do that. I love to push the boundary. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit so that they go, yeah. oh, yeah. I know I sometimes, <laughs> go, on, go on, sorry, Pip. <laughs> yeah. No, I would say, I would, they might say, I wouldn't have done it for myself, but it looks amazing and I love it, like yeah. that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what delights me too. Is that when I I know I can push the boundaries a bit, mm. and I know I can, you know, I test the waters, and sometimes I get these. Oh wow! Oh, I like that. And you think, yes, I'm on the right track. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. So that yeah. kind of leads into what we were going to talk about as well, which is the difference between an interior designer and an interior decorator. Yeah. So. Yeah. Maybe you could explain the difference between those two. Yeah, look, interior designer does encompass a lot a lot of design, so actually structural things with inside a dwelling or a, a office or a commercial space. Mm -hmm. They design um, cabinet, built-in cabinets, um, you know, move walls. Sometimes that comes into interior design. Um, but interior decoration does have a bit of that, in it mm. um, but interior decoration is more about the overall look and feel of the space so the color the texture the um the items that are put into that space okay. into that um i do work with uh, a kitchen designer mm. and i do have someone that yeah does all my design work for me because that's not my real love right. but i do understand it and i work with it as well when i'm mm. talking to my clients so the, the thing that really I love is just bringing the personality into a space. You, know, yep. you can have these bare, bare walls and floor and then you bring all these beautiful things in mm. and, you know, it just. Yeah. Can you see when you walk into a, a blank space, um, can you see where you would put everything straight away or do you have a number of different options that come to mind? Yeah, look. Sometimes it takes a bit of thinking. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it's not always instant. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is obvious yeah. where, you know, a sofa needs to be and a table yeah. and a lamp yeah. um, <laughs> or a piece of artwork on the right. wall. Yep. Yeah, so I, I do have different approaches. Mm, that's interesting. So it, does it depend on the person or the space yeah. or is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it does really depend on the rapport and the mm -hmm. connection that I have with that person and then I start tapping into yeah, yeah that that's how I usually find that I get like some when I'm put on the spot and I don't have that connection with someone yeah sometimes it's difficult to actually yeah, because you don't know them at all and yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So that's, I guess, um, you know, when people contact you, you do like a 20 minute sort of discovery call that yeah. would where you would sort of get into, you know, what do they like? Who are they? What do you actually cover in that 20 minutes so that people can, so you can get an idea of them and they can yeah. get an idea of you? Yeah, look, it's it's something that I've been doing recently, um, the Zoom mm -hmm. call, because I actually think you get a lot more um, mm. communication with people when it's face, you know, yeah. FaceTime. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah. I used to do it on the phone 
and yeah. you know 20 minutes just comes and goes really quickly and yeah. I can build up a lot of rapport in that time so yeah, yeah. I ask questions about yeah, their family and you know their lifestyle and things yeah. they like things they don't like um it's just a real get to know you kind of um cool. and the conversation and there's things that might come up instinctively I think oh I should ask that question yeah or you know and it's yeah it's finding out what sort of personality these people have because I like to work with people that I like yeah, um, sure. and and get along with because yeah. I get a better result obviously um, <laughs> and if you know it's someone that I don't really quite gel with then you know maybe they're not the right clients for me or I'm not the right designer for them so sure. Sure. yeah it's a great opportunity and there's no obligation it's just mm. An opportunity for them to see who I am as yeah. well it's a bit of an interview kind of thing mm, um, yeah yeah because a lot of people have never worked with a designer before and they don't really understand what's involved um, yeah yeah so you know I do talk a little bit about my process and um the fees I mean I don't probably get into fees as much but um yeah it's just a introduction yeah. Right. Mm. Yeah. Just I think that's important to for the person to have the opportunity to ask you questions and get to know whether or not you're the right person, but also yeah. for yeah. you to work out if they're the right client for you. Because like you say, sometimes it's just not a, a good fit and you and yeah. you don't you don't get each other, you know? Yeah. And yeah. you're not going to get a good result if you're working with someone that you don't really fit with. Absolutely. Um, and yeah. sometimes people can get a bit caught up in that, you know, um, just it's a client and therefore I need to take that client, you know, yeah. and that's yeah. not not always the best way yeah, in exactly. fact it's never I don't think it's ever the best way but <laughs> <laughs> but that's just you know some people do it like that you know mm. <laughs> so mm. that's how they run their business but um so we've um we've already come to the end of our yeah. little um time Sounds that we were going to talk about so <laughs> we've we've talked about the discovery call which is great so if people want to get in touch they can do that and you've talked about your Instagram page um which is at green room interiors yes Yes, and I'm very active. I'm on there every single day. Right. Um, and, I, yeah, I just love, I think that's a great platform for, for what I do to showcase some yeah. amazing interiors that I do, but also share things. Yeah. I, I'm very much about sharing and educating people mm. um, on my platform. Yeah. So, yeah, check me out there. <laughs> lots of good tips and yeah you give lots of good value it's very juicy like if anyone gets into there you can see that there you get a lot from your yep. Instagram um, page which is great and then the Facebook page which is obviously um, very similar is at yes. Green Room Interiors as well yep. Um, yep. so and you're doing videos and things like that too so that people can get to know you a bit better yeah. as well yep Great, fantastic. So, um, yeah, if there's, is there anything else? Oh, no, you mentioned your blog as well before we yeah, finish up. Yeah, yeah, that's on my website, which is greenroominteriors.com.au. Okay. And I also, if people wanted to just connect with me um, or get some inspiration and hints and tips for de design, I do have a fortnightly email that I send out and it's called Inspiration from the Green Room. Great. So if you wanted to reach out, um, contact me on Instagram. There's actually a link in my profile um, to sign up for that. So, Great. yeah, that's so some, can, another way I share. Yeah, fantastic. So if you go to the website, you can sign up to subscribe yes. to the newsletter. Yes. And is that a weekly a weekly Fortnight. connection? Yeah. Fortnightly. Great. Cool. And I, I, I don't spam people. I only do it fortnightly and it's, yeah, there's no pressure. Cool. Awesome. Yay. Well, thank you so much. It's been great as always to connect with you and uh, hopefully uh, people get some beautiful inspiration from this and come and talk to you. That'd be amazing. Thank you Yay. so much, Pip. It's been an honour and a pleasure. Yay. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a okay, great day. Bye.